come to our faith community as Sacred Heart on the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. My name is Mary Kay Head. I ask that you please pick up a bulletin when you leave this afternoon because it will list all the many things that are scheduled in our area. Two events that I especially want to note to you, uh, these are sponsored by the Tri-Carriage Health Ministry. First of all, there will be a speaker on aging, which will affect a lot of us, and these will be on June 8, from 2 to 4. This will be held at Flanagan Hall, out of Lourdes. And the other event they are sponsoring is an active shooter training, and that will be held here at Sacred Heart on June 11 at 6.15 here in the church. Two other upcoming events, one in June and one in July, are actually advertised on easels in the Festival of Julie, so you might take a minute and take a look at those as well. As the living body of Christ, the Church, we are continually nourished by the Eucharistic feast. Jesus remains with us even after his death to be the life-giving presence that we count on. He gives us his body and blood so that we may be one with him and heirs to the kingdom. Today's Mass is being offered for the eternal rest of Job and me. If you have a cell phone, please be sure that it's silenced your Mass. And at this time, I invite you to stand and remain standing as you read those around you. Lord have mercy. 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 
Christ have mercy. For the word calls us to grow. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins and bring us the light of the last day.
the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that had come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of the heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saturday afternoon, 
And if you're from uh, across town or out of town, whatever the situation might be, we uh, appreciate your presence with us this afternoon to celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Jesus. And some of you we might be traveling later on this evening or tomorrow, so we pray God's holy angels will watch over you and keep you safe on your journey. You know, when you look at the stories of the scripture, both the Old Testament, Hebrew scriptures, and the New Testament, the Christian uh, scriptures, we see that oftentimes people dealt with those that they disagreed with by picking up stones and throwing them. Right? <clears throat> and uh, a lot of times it had to do with what they considered a capital offense. And so it was considered a uh, capital punishment. But um, whether it be a prophet or maybe Jesus, on one occasion particularly it's mentioned, and then of course St. Paul, and we know that there were plenty of others who experienced a, a similar fate. Because uh, of the things they believed in, because of the things they said, because of some of the actions they were taking, or the, uh, the way they were living their life. And so it, it was uh, decided that they needed to be punished even to the point of losing their life. So, <clears throat> using stones was very um, common, particularly 2,000 years ago. But we always have to be mindful that uh, those stones, just uh, like lots of things in the scriptures, are metaphorical and or symbolic. And they're meant to remind us of not just the big old rocks that are um, uh, on our land all the time and the yards, but also the, the hard, stony heart that sometimes is inside of us, or sometimes uh, symbolic of sins that we're guilty of, or attitudes that we're guilty of. So it could be prejudices, it could be um, being judgmental, it could be um, pride or conceit, arrogance. It could be uh, anger, hatred, and resentment. So particularly for the Jewish people 2,000 years ago, those stones were uh, especially used, or at least the symbolic stones were used and directed towards people like Samaritans, or people like tax collectors, and people like adulterers, or other serious sinners, blasphemers, etc. Which, of course, is one of the sins that they accused Jesus of on a couple of occasions as reported by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So, remember, 2,000 years later, we still struggle with some of those. And so, at the beginning of every Mass, that's one of the reasons why we have our penitential ceremony. We start out this celebration of Mass coming into a communion with our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and particularly receiving the body and blood of the Son of God in Holy Communion by first asking forgiveness for the stones that we carry in our lives. And I already named a lot of them, and there are others. Stones that hopefully we bring and get rid of in the sacrament of reconciliation on a regular basis, or as needed. But in either event, at the beginning of every Mass, we're, we're asked to look deep inside of ourselves and see if we can turn those stony hearts into much more loving hearts in imitation of Jesus because we're going to enter into a holy communion with them. And as St. Paul says to us in the scriptures, we should receive Jesus in holy communion, approach Jesus in holy communion with a, in a purity of heart. So we cleanse ourselves with the penitential rite. It's interesting that one of the most well-known incidences of people picking up stones and throwing them was the woman caught in adultery. We remember the story. <clears throat> now, it's interesting that in all that story, there are only two people that didn't have any stones. There was a crowd, they all had stones ready to fling them. But there were only two people that didn't have a stone in their hand. One was Jesus a saint, and the other was a woman, a sinner. And probably the reason is because saints have compassion. That's why they're saints. They've learned to imitate the compassion of Jesus Christ. And he, of course, is the greatest example of compassion. And then the saints, or the sinners, they have humility. Because they know, they've admitted in all honesty, they've done something wrong, they're imperfect. 
And so they don't carry those things. Saints and sinners. And we come here as sinners. And so we need to learn from the example of the greatest saint of all, Jesus, the Son of God, on how to be humble and how to be compassionate. And so when we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi, we're not only being reminded of one of the fact, most important tenets of our faith. In fact, the bishops in 1962 said is the source and summit of our faith, celebration of Mass, Jesus coming to us in Holy Communion, the source and summit of our faith, which of course is just a good description of Jesus Christ. The source of our faith and the highest point in our faith, the experience of faith, Jesus Christ. We come here to enter into a communion with Jesus Christ, but that's, we're not here to take, although he does say, take and eat, take and drink, but it doesn't end there. We're supposed to also become, become through Holy Communion with Jesus. Despite our faults and failures, more saintly. And so in becoming more and more like Jesus, and opening our hands up or receiving on the tongue, whatever it might be, we have to let go of those stones. We have to get rid of those stones. And not only here, but out there, where it's so easy to pick them up and throw them. Not literal stones, of course, but in a figurative sense, in a metaphorical sense, which all too often happens not just towards people that we don't have to live with, but sometimes even with people we live with. And so as we reflect on this wonderful feast of Corpus Christi, and what we do here every time we celebrate it in Holy Mass, on the weekend or throughout the weekday, here or anywhere in the world, it is not just an invitation. It's not just an invitation to receive Jesus Christ. The challenge to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before the angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God and not made, because we stand to with the Father, through him all things to the name. For us men for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, the Son of the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the court of the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds to the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one and only Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We take this moment to search our hearts and minds for any particular needs that lie deep within. Lifting them up along with each on behalf of our community this afternoon. The response to our intercessions is, Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, many members with one body, may we be a people who give wholehearted thanks to God and allow God to build us into a community of faith and love. We pray. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share the mystery of the priesthood, may their lives manifest God's love to all and the service to help people to experience communion with God and others, we pray. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to live in peace and harmony in our country, may God help us accept the differences in one another, understand the gifts that others bring, 
and give us patience as we strive to work together to end all forms of discrimination. We pray. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For all those serving in the military, especially those deployed overseas, may they always receive the Lord's protection. We pray. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For these prayers and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Humbly we come before you, Heavenly Father, with these petitions, confident that you will attend to them according to your holy wisdom through the intercession of your Son Jesus, who comes to us, body and blood, soul and divinity, from this altar this afternoon in Holy Communion. But also, as well, we know and believe, even now, sits at your right hand in eternity, forever and ever. Amen.
Please pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord in His name. For our good and all of the Holy Church. Grant your spiritual Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we present here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Be it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that they, in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out with one end we acclaim.
Look with favor on the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. And grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph Christos, with the holy apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose confident intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop. The order of bishops, to all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Amen.
You can build a body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present day by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.